Our friends over at speculativefaith.com are lending us another article, this one titled Not Always Popular, written by Shannon McDermott, published February 12th, 2020. She writes, Today we are going to discuss three distinctly Christian subgenres of speculative fiction and why they are not always popular with Christian readers of speculative fiction, such as myself and possibly you. Feel free to share. First, a disclaimer is in order. I am not, in principle, opposed to any of these genres, and as a reader I have at least dabbled in all of them. I am certain that each one boasts some truly fine books. I am not saying that there is anything inherently inferior about such stories, let alone inherently wrong. It's simply that I, playing the odds of what I am most likely to enjoy, don't choose to read them anymore. And now enough disclaiming and on to the point. The three distinctly Christian subgenres are the end times. Again, some fine books belong to each of these categories. Evan Angler's excellent and sadly discontinued Swipe series is a shining illustration of the point. In the main, however, I don't enjoy novels about the end times. On the one hand, I find it dreary to read about relentless loss, tribulation, and cataclysm, culminating in the Antichrist's conquest of the entire earth. On the other hand, I find it predictable. It's just mapping revelation prophecies to the inevitable conclusion. I loved Angler's End Time series, but I wasn't sure it was an end time series until the second book. Until then, I thought it might have been a dystopia flavored by apocalyptic prophecy, and hoped that it was. The Nephilim. My instinctive response to the Nephilim subgenre is neutrality. I am not offended by the angel-slash-human concept, and if you can recast the essential idea in a sci-fi form, members of an incorporeal species assume physical bodies to interact with humanity and interact to the point of reproducing, it's actually pretty intriguing. Question. In such a scenario, would the offspring really be hybrid? Because for reproduction to be possible, wouldn't the assumed bodies have to be genetically human, perhaps with minor variations from the norm? But, and how can I put this kindly, novels about the Nephilim often take an extreme left turn into strangeness. UFOs, Roswell, tinfoil government conspiracies, monsters, aliens, sometimes all in the same book. I know, I read it. It's all too much. The Nephilim subgenre also gives too much play to false readings of scripture. One, that it was because of the Nephilim that God sent the flood. Two, that the Nephilim are somehow connected to the end times. In a cheap intellectual sleight of hand, some quote Jesus, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of Son of Man, leaving off the rest of the passage where Christ explains in what way the days of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah, and it isn't the Nephilim. Angels versus Demons. I don't question the poetic triumph of Paradise Lost, or the shrewd, sharp effectiveness of the screw tape letters. And it isn't only the classics. This Present Darkness was one of my first loves in Christian speculative fiction. But over the years, I cooled towards stories that give center stage to angels and demons. I admit the last couple books I read in the genre did much of the cooling. Yet I think it is a general, not of course a universal, weakness of such stories to make angels too... human. I want a bit of grandeur or otherworldliness, a flavor of heaven or hell. It's a tall order, and harder the larger the role. Even now, I think that angels, good and bad, can be well used in fantastic fiction, but especially in roles that are somewhat marginal or mysterious. In my earlier years of reading, I wandered through these subgenres and ended at the conclusion that they are not my thing. It's curious how easily they overlap. Somewhere I know they have converged entirely into an end times novel where the Nephilim fight with demons against angels. Yeah, it's been interesting to see how uh, these ideas have been drawn from over the years in uh, Christian speculative fiction. Uh, I remember 
you know, back in the day, you know, this would be 2006 when I released the first part of our Spirit Blade audio drama trilogy, I was already tired of end time stories and that seemed to be the only kinds of science fiction Christian stories being written was about the end times and so I was determined I'm going to write a futuristic story and it's not going to have anything to do with the end times, you know. Um, and it was a novel idea at the time to kind of explore the Nephilim a little bit, but now we've seen over the years uh, a, a ton of stuff about the Nephilim, uh, the the spiritual battle between angels and demons, which was really big with Peretti's work and also with the Gene Edwards' The Chronicles of the Doors, both inspirations for my Spirit Blade audio drama trilogy. And so, uh, yeah, it's interesting um, to see uh, these ideas being pulled from again and again and to the point where it's, you know, become, become kind of played out. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, great article, not always popular, again, is the title, written by Shannon McDermott over at speculativefaith.com, where you can find tons of other great content. And if you're interested in my take on at least two of those <laughs> three subgenres of uh, Christian speculative fiction or Christian science fiction, you can get the first part of our Spirit Blade audio drama trilogy, which also functions as a nice, uh, a nice self-contained story completely for free in Legacy Edition format uh, over at spiritblade.com. 